Come with me to the Old Testament, to the book of Obadiah. Amen. Verse number 15. And I will be reading it from the Message Bible. God's judgment day is near for all the godless nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. Amen. What you did will boomerang back and hit you in your own head. Just as you party on my holy mountain, all the godless nations will drink God's wrath. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. For a few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject, avoiding the boomerang effect. Avoiding the boomerang effect. The boomerang effect is an undesired situation or turn of events in which our deeds have the opposite effect from the one we intended. As we have traveled through this prophetic book, we understand that our deeds are not hidden from God's eyes. That's verses 1 through 5. We understand that pride puts us on the path towards destruction rather than a kingdom path. Verses 6 through 9. We cannot escape the judgment of God. Verses 10 and 11. We should never gloat over the misfortune of others. Verses 12 through 14. And last but not least, our evil deeds will come back and haunt us. Verses 15 through 21. And so on today, I want to talk to you briefly about accountability. My God. Accountability is the act of a person or organization willingly being liable or responsible for their actions, their desires, and ultimately their decisions. Accountability is also defined as the acceptance of the consequences for one's own actions. Accountability, my brothers and my sisters, goes hand in hand with confession. And it is an agreement with God that our actions are either acceptable or unacceptable in his sight. Accountability implies a willingness to be transparent, allowing others to observe and evaluate our performance. So we want to sum all of that up. Accountability is simply the acceptance that I am in the place that I am in because of this, the decisions that I have made or the decisions I did not make. It's a tragedy that many folk simply refuse to be accountable for the things that they've said and the things that they've done. However, my brothers and my sisters, 
It is our mandate as disciples of Jesus Christ that we be honest with our God. Yes. Honest with ourselves and honest with one another. We must be honest about the things that we have thought, said, and done. Yes. Amen. We understand that being accountable, I'll say it again, is us being honest yeah. with God. Yeah. Honest with ourselves and understand this, that when we are honest with God and honest with ourselves, it makes us reliable witnesses. All right. And not only does it make us reliable witnesses, it makes us approachable. Yeah. Because understand this, nobody can identify with a perfect person. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 4 verses 12 and 13 state, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is, it is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Cutting between the soul and the spirit, between the joint and the marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Amen. The word lets us know that everything is naked and exposed before His eyes, Amen. and He is the one. To whom we are accountable to. Amen. So as we engage this ministry of life and the circumstances that surround this ministry, we understand these principles. God's word is alive and it must be internalized. The word of God is powerful and it guides and keeps us in the good moments and in our difficult moments. The word of God exposes our innermost thoughts and deeds and we understand that nothing in creation hides from God's word or his offer. We are accountable to it, the word, which means we are accountable to God. Yeah. See, my brothers and my sisters, we don't want to be like Eden and have what we have done in our own power and in our own rationalizations come back and haunt us. So we want to avoid what I call the boom boomerang effect. And the author of Hebrews gives us a warning about faithless disobedience. But it also gives us hope and direction on how to avoid consequences and repercussions that may be coming our way. In being accountable to God, we understand that disobedience will not go unnoticed. And we also know that the word of God, which is God's personal utterance, is living. It is active and it exposes. The word, I'll say it one more time, exposes the actions and intentions consistently in the life of the believers. But my brothers and my sisters, if we are unsure on how to move today, the songwriter simply said, just ask the Savior to help you. Yeah. To comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Because he is willing to aid you. And he will carry you through. See, when temptation is trying to infiltrate our minds, God will comfort God will strengthen and God will keep you. When the schemes of the evil one attempt to detour you from your progress, God will comfort, 
God will strengthen and he will keep you. When you feel like you've been overwhelmed, God will comfort. He will strengthen and he will keep you. Remember, you are an overcomer. You are more than a conqueror. You are victorious. So keep fighting the good fight of faith. Continue to be kind-hearted and to be true. And look ever to Jesus because he will carry you through. Obadiah, as we know, is the shortest book in the Old Testament. And it is a prophetic condemnation of Edom for the treatment of the people of Judah. Understand that this conflict dated back to the twins Come on now, Pastor. in Rebecca's womb in Genesis 25, 22. Right. My brothers and my sisters, we understand that the Edomites are descendants of the elder son Esau. Right. And the people of Judah are descendants of Jacob. Amen. And just as they were in conflict in the womb, there was conflict between their people. Amen. Listen to me closely. The people of Edom had closed the borders of their heart and the borders of their land to the people of Israel Amen. when they were on their way to the promised land. Yeah, yeah. Back in Numbers chapter 20 verses 14 through 21. See the king of Edom simply told his kinfolk stay out of my land yeah. Yeah. or I will meet you with my army. Amen. And even though the people of Israel promised to stay on the main road mm -hmm. Where well, my Bible readers at? Yeah. And they were willing to pay for the water that their livestock would drink. Yeah. The king still told them to stay away. And not only did he mobilize his army, he got some other folks. Amen. Yes, he did. To stand with him against his kinfolk. My brothers and my sisters. Let me make this crystal clear on today that we are not to close the borders of our heart to one another. Amen. God has bestowed upon us blessing after blessing so we can be loving instruments to and for his glory to our brothers and our sisters. So you understand that we all are going through something. On today, but Reverend Slater, God has blessed us yes, to be a blessing. We may be ailing and debilitated, but God has blessed us to be a blessing. We may have overextended ourselves, and sometimes we feel like folk are taking advantage of us, but God has blessed us Amen. to be a blessing. See, understand that we are not always going to see eye to eye. You may go right, and I may say go left. My agenda may not be your agenda, and we may see things differently, but God has blessed us to be a blessing to one another. Yes. Amen. Edom also enjoyed having a front row seat to witness the destruction and judgment of Judah years later at the hand of the Babylonians. See what they did? Thinking was was some of the refugees would get away. And the Edomites chose not to be a safe place. But what they chose to do was to capture their brethren and return them back to their captors. 
He they even looted. Jerusalem, after it fell. See, we understand that God's punishment to Edom was harsh. And the reflection of how they had mistreated their brother in their time of need. Amen. Are y'all with me? By God's decree to Obadiah the prophet, what Israel, what Edom did to Israel was to be done to them. Amen. Furthermore, the nation would be destroyed with no possibility of recovery. All right. This, this simply lets us know that God, and listen to me closely, God is not in favor of us inflicting our own judgment and punishment on people or adding to their suffering even if God is disciplining them. The divine retribution that is promised to Edom because Edom had committed iniquity against Judah was that what you have done will be done to you. And what you did, you know, will boomerang back and hit you in the head. All right. So with that understood, what are the keys to avoiding the boomerang effect as we navigate and engage life's complications and life's difficulties. Mm -hmm. Number one, there must be an understanding Amen. of who God is. Amen. And from our standpoint, we must do are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. What we need to do yeah. to make the relationship with him all that it can be. Praise the Lord. Let me say it one more time. My note take this. There must be an understanding of who God is. And from our standpoint, we must do what we need to do to make the relationship all that it can be. If we do this, there will be an equipping by God. Amen. That equipping by God will lead to us having understanding. Then when situations arrive, we will have the understanding of who we are in reference to God. All right. He is the potter. Right. And we are clean. Yeah. Yeah. He is above. And we are beneath. Yeah. He is infinite. We are finite. Yeah. He is the creator and we are the creation. Amen. He is the most high. Mm -hmm. And above him, my brothers and my sisters, there is no other. And due to this, point number two, we must be willing to walk in reverence to God with the heart of obedience rooted in humility while striving for holiness. Amen. Do I need to say that again? Yeah. We must be willing to walk in reverence to God and make me respect him. And as we respect him, Sister Joyce, we have a heart of obedience rooted in humility while we strive for the holiness of God. Amen. This means we walk the way he tells us to walk. Yes. We say what he has instructed us to say. Yes. Is he thinking words of me? If we do this, 
We will avoid behavior and talk that will come back and haunt us later. And in all this, point number three, we understand that no matter what we say, no matter what we do, all right. no matter what's been done to us or said about us, that God is always close. Always. Amen. Always. We must grasp the fact that Jesus Christ is our point of reconnection to God. Are y'all with me? Amen. And without the reconnection to God, we are incapable of producing fruit. Remember, I am the vine. And he has the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So we must grasp the fact that Jesus Christ is our point of reconnection. Understand? My brothers and my sisters, by the mere fact that we are connected means we are being nourished and strengthened by God. And understand that the horizontal pressures that we endure day in and day out yeah. are for a vertical purpose. The songwriter says, God sent his son. They called him yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. He came to love. Hallelujah. Yeah. He came to heal. Yeah. He came to forgive. Yeah. He bled and he died. And he died. To buy my pardon. Hallelujah. And an empty grave is there to prove. That my Savior lives. Amen. So we can live righteously on today, mm -hmm. even when we stumble, because He lives. Amen. Today's problems, we declare, will not overwhelm us tomorrow, Amen. because He lives. He lives. We can be healed. We can be delivered. We can be set free. Yes. Because He lives. He lives. The emptiness of disappointment will no longer burden our hearts because he lives. We can make endure for a night, but joy, joy. comes in the morning joy. because he lives. Yeah. The desperation for deliverance will not cause us to detour because he lives. Yeah. Come here thinking right. The songwriter said, Father along, yeah. we'll know all about it. Yeah. Father along, yeah. we'll understand why. Yeah. Cheer up, yeah. HMBC. Yeah. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it. Yeah. All by and by, understand. we understand that God originates. Hallelujah. He initiates. Hallelujah. We understand he's the author and the finisher yeah. of our faith. Yeah. We understand that God can do anything but fail. We understand yeah. he's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator, a burden bearer, and all sufficient redeemer. His intentions are for us yeah. to progress. His intentions are for us to mature. His intentions are for us to maximize yeah. our potential. And we are not to abort the development process. Hallelujah. We will not compromise Hallelujah. the power of his presence because the joy of the Lord yeah. is our strength yeah. and we are deprived. The joy yeah. of the Lord is our strength when we're downhearted. The joy yeah. of the Lord yeah. is our strength when we cannot find our way. The joy of the Lord yeah. is our strength when folks turn their back on us. The joy yeah. of the Lord is our strength if we're broken, disconnected, if we've been rejected, 
The joy of the Lord is our strength. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We can avoid the boomerang effect because we are covered in the blood. The joy. We can avoid the boomerang effect because we are covered in the blood of the Lamb. We can love. We are covered in the blood of the Lamb. We can be authentic. We are covered in the blood of the Lamb. We can be honest with one another. We are covered in the blood of the Lamb. When disagreements come, we can agree to disagree because we're covered in the blood of the Lamb. Folks go wrong us, but we won't hold no grudges. We are covered in the blood of the Lamb. We can dwell together in unity. We are covered in the blood of the man, it reaches to the high mountain, it flows to the lower valley. The blood that gives the strength of love day to day, it will never, ever lose. Hallelujah! It's power. Hallelujah! And by the grace of Almighty God, yeah. we can avoid the boomerang yeah. effect. Yeah. So, what are the keys? What are the keys to avoiding these complications and difficulties that we might bring on ourselves? There must be an understanding of who God is. Yes. Because understand, nobody's perfect. But we must understand who God is. And we must be willing to nurture our relationship with God no matter what. And we must be willing to walk in the reverence or respect of God. We must be willing to be obedient. We must be willing to be humble as we strive for the holiness of God. Amen. Because we understand that even though we live in 2022, holiness is still right. Yeah. And last but not least, no matter what we say, no matter what we do, All right. no matter what's done to us All right. or said about us, we have the confidence in knowing that no matter what we endure, Brother Brown, that God is close. And because God is close, we already got the victory. And we can give God some praise up in here for today. So we can avoid the boomerang effect. My brothers and my sisters, don't be like you. Don't close the borders of your heart. But love yes. unconditionally. And remember that we are accountable to God for what we do and what we don't do. The doors of the church are open.